So let's start with the, the topics on, on fuses. Now fuses can be described with several different characteristics. The most important three I find are the operating voltage. So under which voltage can you safely operate a particular fuse? And then the voltage is really a range, right? So it will say, for example, you can operate this fuse at a voltage range of zero up to 100 volts DC. Uh, then of course it also has this breaking current, so at which current it normally sacrifices itself and disconnects the, the circuit, and then you have to replace the fuse, so that's the breaking current. You also have the response time, so how long does it take before the, the fuse melts? Because if you have a fuse rated at 100 amps and you would surpass the 100 amps, actually it won't break right away there's always a slight a very slight response time which is normally expressed in the, in the milliseconds it takes before uh, the, the fuse will actually break so you hit a value over 100 amps and it has a response time of uh, t milliseconds so it takes an additional t milliseconds before the fuse will actually uh, disconnect the circuit so these, in my opinion, are the three most important values of a fuse. And of course, depending on what your system looks like, what you're looking for in the functionality of the fuse, you will find a wide variety of fuses of models, shapes and sizes, right? But that really depends on what kind of a system you are looking at or working with. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's look at a practical example of how a fuse can be incorporated in your system. And let's take a simple example. We'll focus on a, on a plug for uh, the one that you press into your wall outlet, right? And this plug has a fuse built in. This is the typical, the British UK plug and has a fuse already built into the plug. Uh, so I want to use this example to explain you how a fuse would operate in, in basically any kind of a system, right? Um, so when you look inside of the plug, you'll see the, the three main connectors. So we've got the, the earth, the neutral and the live. And then the, the fuse is placed in series with your circuitry. It's placed in series with your circuitry. So let's assume the power arrives from your wall outlet towards the, the live connector of your plug. Then the, the power will travel through your fuse. All of the power will go through your fuse. And then towards your load, towards the appliances that you're powering up. And the electricity comes back through the blue wire and goes out through the, the neutral connector of your plug. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Right, and you can see that in a normal situation, the, the earth is not uh, contributing to your overall electrical uh, system, right? So the power is flowing through the life connector, through the fuse into your loads, and then it comes back and out through the neutral connector. Now, if we zoom a little bit into the fuse, we'll see that the, the fuse is more like a body. It's an element, and inside of the body, we have the small sacrificial strip, so all of the current will actually flow through this very small strip of metal. And then what happens if you surpass the rating of the fuse, then this piece of metal will heat up so much that it will just literally melt away. Therefore, if you surpass the conditions under which it would normally break, it will melt away and it will disrupt, disrupt the circuit, right? Because now you don't have a continuous electrical circuit anymore. So that's how a uh, sacrificial fuse would work in a typical power plug. Now, and I just want to voice my concerns about a particular situation that I, uh, that I've often seen happening is that people kind of bypass fuses in power plugs. And please don't do this. Please don't circumvent the safety measures that are built into your equipment, right? Um, this is really important. The safety measures are there for a reason. So please use your equipment the way it's supposed to be used in order to avoid uh, breakdowns or fires of your system. Sorry, I just needed to say, to say that. I just want to make sure that you stay safe. Um, so fuses can come in any kind of shape, sizes, color, etc. So you might recognize the, the the glass ones that we just looked at before. They're pretty old school and classic. You also have the the kind of plugs with the two pins. You often find them in uh, in low voltage and low usage equipment, uh, such as in your car, for example. Often the fuses in your car look like the plugs um, for your if you're using an off-grid solar energy system with a larger capacity of equipment, you might use a fuse or something like this. Um, but they are all they all still basically operate on the same principle, right? So it's some kind of a an holder, and inside of the holder, there's 
one place where you have the sacrificial element. So with these kind of fuses, it's hidden inside of the, the plastic um, plastic box. And then normally, depending on which fuse you have, normally the rating of the fuse is imprinted in one way or another on the body of the fuse. So when we look at, at this fuse, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that it has that it says 250 amps. So it's a breaking, uh, the rated breaking capacity of the fuse and the operating voltage is up to 32 volts. And you can see that the, the, the rating, the characteristics are also imprinted often in the, the hard body of the fuse itself, right? Here we can see this got 32 volts and it 250 amps is repeated on the copper material as well. Now let's take a small sidestep and go online again. I just want to show you an example of uh, some of these fuses that we talked about. So let's go to the website of atfuse.com, A-I-T-E. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it in the right way. I am not affiliated with this manufacturer. I'm not telling you whether it's, the products are good or bad. I just want to show you an example of some of the fuses and holders that you can find online on the market. So let's scroll down. Here we go to the photovoltaic users. And here you can see some of the values and the kind of characteristics that we talked about before. So the theoretical section. So you can see here that the, the fuse itself, which I refer to as the fuse link, uh, there's two different types. Come with a voltage range of up to 1000 volts DC or 1500 volt DC. And then you have the actual rated breaking currents of the fuse link of the fuse which starts at 1, 2, 3, goes all the way up to 25, 30, and 32 amps. And then some of the other values at the end of the table, they describe the actual holder, right? So now you have the sacrificial element, which is inside of the fuse, and then the fuse itself, what they refer to as the fuse link, you place it in the fuse holder, and the fuse holder is then normally clipped on, uh, on the rail. Uh, so you can see here that it says, so also the fuse holders, so the plastic bodies, they come in two different voltage range, ranges, 1000 volt or 1500 volts, and they're rated up to 32 amps, which correspond with the highest rated fuse that they have available. So I thought it was just a fun little exercise to show you what you can find online. Um, so I think this is enough about the fuses, right? 